Well, Scott Sager with you here, RTC TV4. Today I'm at Rochester Middle School where they're holding their 20% time presentation. So let's take a look with uh, some of the kids, see what they've done their presentations on here for the 2018 20% time presentations. Okay, well now I'm with a young man. What's your name? Uh, Noah Riffle. Noah has a, a nice little presentation here he's put together on his iPad, right? And uh, this is about what? The history of Notre Dame hockey. Okay, the history of Notre Dame hockey. That's a fantastic subject. How'd you come up with that? Um, I play hockey in South Bend, okay. so I wanted to know the history of Notre Dame hockey. Well, that's fun. Did you learn a lot through the process? Yeah, I did. Excellent. Tell us some of the things you learned. How long have they been playing hockey up there at Notre Dame? Well, Notre Dame hockey started in 1912. Wow. But it, it didn't become a Division I hockey team till hockey college hockey team till 1966. 66 was the official co collegiate team. Now, tell me, uh, you play up in South Bend. How often do you go up there? Um, we practice two times a week in South Bend. Excellent. You want to be an Olympic hockey uh, skater on the team? Um, right now I'm playing for fun, but... I'm on the travel of the Rovers travel hockey team, and it, and I I want to just play the best I can. And excellent, excellent. Well, we've got a, a future hockey star here at Rochester Middle School. Again, tell everybody your name. Noah Riffle. Excellent, Noah. Well, Noah, a great presentation. A lot of fun today. Okay, thanks for being here. We'll have some more kids coming up for you. Okay, Scott Sager here with you. Who am I here with? Uh, Audrey Arvin. Audrey, and uh, who's up here hiding? Uh, his name is Frankie. Frankie, Frankie, you want to talk? No? Want to say hi? Well, tell us what your project is here. Um, my project is about animal abuse and how it affects the pets that it happens to. Okay. Uh, too much animal abuse out there, I'm certain of that. Talk to us about what you learned in your project. Um, I learned that, like, people think that when you abuse an animal, all that type of animal is vicious, you know, yeah. like pit bulls. Yeah. Um, but in reality, um, they're sweet and nice, and I just feel like people mis like misjudge a lot. Animals have feelings, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I like your cat here. Thank you. Boy or girl? Uh, boy. Boy. Well, thank you for doing such a great project. Let's make sure, hey, Bob Barker used to tell us, spay and neuter your animals, but I want to tell you, uh, make sure that you're uh, taking care of the Fulton County Animal Center and Education Center to uh, help them with donations, volunteers, and more uh, to help spread the word about animal abuse, and let's end it, okay? Thanks so much. Tell everybody your name again. Uh, Audrey. Excellent. Thank you, Audrey. Okay, well, we're here with another project. What's your name, sir? I'm Wesley Steininger. Excellent. And it uh, looks like you're a swimmer, huh? We've got the history of competitive swimming, right? Yep. Excellent. You're wearing your Rochester Royals swim team. Uh, how long have you been swimming with the Royals? About five years, I think. Wow. So, like, since you were born, right? Definitely. Yeah, just about then. Well, talk to us. What would you learn here? Uh, I see you've got the lanes laid out. Tell us about the pool. What do you know about the pool that you didn't know before? Um, well, I didn't... I really, since I've been swimming for so long, I realized that... Uh, I knew quite a bit about what I uh, did my project over, uh -huh. so I didn't really learn much about the pool. I did learn some facts. You knew that coming in, right? Yeah. Okay. So talk to us about some of the things you did learn. Um, some of the things that I did learn were... Um, so they can see you here. Um, so when I was researching, I found out that uh, butterfly, mm -hmm. the stroke, it was actually uh, made by breaststrokers back in the early 1900s. Okay. They got uh, tired of doing the breaststroke and decided, yeah, the butterfly's easier? Or is it harder? Um, so the, what they would do, would they would do the same uh, butter, uh, breaststroke kick, mm -hmm. but instead of doing the breaststroke arms, they'd bring their uh, arms over their head, mm -hmm. like a uh, butterfly. Mm -hmm. um, and, that, and that was banned, but then that led to the stroke of butterfly. So originally it was banned, but they later brought it back to be its own stroke. Yep. That's fantastic. Well, a really neat project here. See some ribbons here. Have you won those yourself? Yep. Excellent. And uh, you're just going to be a, a big swimmer now. What grade are you in now? Sixth grade. Sixth grade. So a couple years we'll be swimming with the zebras, right? 
Yep. All right, we look forward to that. As you know, we cover swimming quite a bit, so happy to do that. Well, uh, good job. Tell everybody your name again. I'm Wesley Steininger. Excellent, Wesley. Good job today. Thank you. All right, more kids to come. Okay, we're with another young lady. She's dressed as a cheerleader. Are you a cheerleader? Uh, yes, I am. All right, what's your name? Chloe Miller. Chloe. What did you find out about the uh, cheerleading going on here in Rochester? Or well, cheerleading in general? Well, nothing that I already actually didn't know. Okay, so she came in knowing some of this. Talk to us about cheerleading. You love it or what? Uh, yeah, okay. a lot. Cheerleader in the middle school? Yes. Great. What grade you in? Six. Okay, so a couple more years. You'll be ready for the varsity team, right? Yep. Excellent. Well, uh, talk to us. What's in your presentation here? Well, basically what I have is just about like the, s the basics of what you have to do in order to be a back spot. Okay. Talks to you about what you have to do to make sure the other girls are safe when they're up in the air doing their thing, right? Yes. Well, excellent. Well, uh, a neat thing and uh, some. see so you've got some video of the Rochester crew up there doing their thing, yep. right? Excellent. Well, a lot of fun. I want to thank you for doing this. Again, tell everybody your name again. Chloe Miller. All right, Chloe, thanks. You're welcome. All right, well, uh, we've got a really neat display here. We've got some guitars sitting about here. We've got, I see an uh, electric and an acoustic. Who is this young man? Who am I talking with? Eric Eikenberry. Excellent, Eric. Uh, what grade are you? A sixth. Sixth grader, okay. Talk to, uh, everybody's a sixth grader here today, aren't they? Okay. So it's the sixth grade presentations. But uh, let's talk about the electric guitar, the acoustic guitar, guitars in general. First of all, what got you going into this subject? Um, my dad, my brother plays, so I just, I see him play and I look up to them so much. It's just, nice. it's inspir inspiration. So dad and brother and inspiration for it. You want to play yourself someday, right? Oh yeah. You learning? I am. Uh, okay. Jim Eikenberry teaching me. Nice. Jim Eikenberry, everybody knows Ike, of course, the great uh, graphic designer as well as uh, artist, musical artist here in uh, Rochester and Fulton County. Well, uh, what'd you learn here a little bit? I see B.B. King up here. He had a famous guitar, didn't he? Uh, for, yeah, he did. Yeah, I've what was her name? I, f I forget. I think it's, it's like Lucy or something. Yeah, it's Lucille. You got it written right here. <laughs> he had a great Gibson. Well, uh, so what, uh, what did you learn maybe from this project that you didn't know before about guitars? There's a lot of like different stuff like the uh, like I really need to know like the chords and the uh, like where the notes are. Got to learn all the chords, don't you? All of them. I like all the minors and the majors and everything. Well, a really neat display. Thanks for being out here today. Tell everybody your name again. Eric Eikenberry. Excellent. Good job, Eric. I'm nervous. I've never done this before. Hey, we're here with another young man. What's your name? Um, Eli or Elisha is my real name, but people call me Eli. Okay, Eli. And uh, Eli, what grade are you in? I'm in sixth grade. I could have guessed that because now we know that they're all sixth graders. I see the uh, Pacers here. What do you got for us here today? I did a brief history overline over the Pacers timeline and okay. different stuff. I m mainly got the ABA era down and Reggie Miller era and some team facts like what their co team colors are. You're probably too young to have ever seen Reggie Miller play in a real game live, right? Yeah. But it, was, it was a sight to behold, let me tell you something. Yeah, he had a unique jump shot. I've watched plenty of clips of him. He's a very interesting player to learn absolutely. about. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you're wearing a Seahawks jersey as well. You a Seahawks fan? Yes, I'm a Seahawks fan. Most people don't like them, but I'm a loyal fan, not a bandwagon, so I like sticking with the original teams. That's great. That's great. Tell everybody your name again. I'm Elijah Clevenger. Okay, and in sixth grade, right? Sixth grade. Thanks for doing this today. It looks great. Okay, more to come. Okay, I've got another young man here. What's your name? Roswell Zeiger. And uh, what's your project on? Well, I did mine on different types of doctors, and I have I added some extra facts. Okay, so learning about the medical industry, huh? Yeah. You want to be a doctor when you grow up? No, it's just something that really interested me because I have a lot of family members that used to be doctors and they liked it, but, and they're like my sister, she wants to be a doctor, so it just really interested me. Did you have fun doing your project? Yeah, I did. Excellent, excellent. Well, uh, neat job here. Tell her about your name again. Roswell Zeiger. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for your time today. Well, we've got a, uh, another furry young friend here with us. What's your name? Emma. Okay, you're not the furry young friend. Oh. Who's this? Molly. Wally? Molly. 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 Molly the girl, not Wally the boy, right? Well, Molly's just sweet as could be. Can I pet Wally? 
probably should have asked. What's your project about? Veterinarian school. Veterinary school. Whew. That's a tough, tough, tough program. Oh, you want to be a veterinarian when you grow up? Yeah. Yeah. They have a really good uh, program in Italy. You should go to it. Best school in Italy. It'd be fun, wouldn't it? Yeah. You get to eat a lot of spaghetti while you do the veterinary stuff. Why do you love animals so much? Did you grow up on a farm? No, but I, I've always grown up with a dog in my house. And so, I don't know. I've just grown up with animals. Are you good with your science? Um, pretty much. Kind pretty of. good. A lot of science to be a veterinarian, right? Well, you just want to help animals overall, right? Yeah. Excellent. Tell everybody your name again. Emma Sells. Excellent. Thank you very much. And Molly, thank you. All right, we'll have some more kids here in a moment. Thanks. Well, here we've got one. Uh, I've been actually here. This is a dedication to the Rock Alcatraz prison out in uh, San Francisco Bay. Who am I talking with here? Peyton Moore. Peyton Moore. Peyton, this is a pretty big subject. What uh, got you interested in this? Um, my family is actually taking a vacation in the spring, okay. so I'm really excited. So you get to go out there, actually? Yes. Wow, that's so neat. So you get to actually see what you've put together here. Well, what did you learn about uh, Alcatraz? Well, I learned some interesting facts and some famous inmates. And then I also learned how it was founded and who it was founded by and how it closed down and why it closed down. Lots of great information, right? What was probably the most fun about uh, learning about Alcatraz? Anything a lot of fun to find out, something you didn't know? Yes, I liked learning about how big the cells were. Yeah. And it said that if you stuck your hands out, that's how big your cell would be. Yep, not very much room at all. No, like the size of a closet. Yep, makes you want to be good, doesn't it? Yeah. There's a lesson there somewhere. Well, Peyton, very nice job on this. Peyton, right? Yeah. Okay. Very nice job on this. And uh, I wish you well, and I hope you have a lot of fun when you're out in uh, California for spring, okay? Thank you. Okay, good job. Thank you. <laughs> okay, having fun here now. Yes, what's your name? Maleficent. Ma Maleficent? Yes, like the villain. I like it. But you're not a villain. You're just happy as can be. Okay, what kind of dog? Siberian Husky. Siberian Husky. Got the pretty eyes, don't you? So how, how old? How long you had her? She is two years old. Two years old. Are you two already? My goodness. You're looking great. She has a sister, but she's at home. Okay, well, let's talk about you for a second. What's your name? Hi, my name's Angel. Angel, and uh, what's your project about? My project is about a dog's mind and anatomy. Okay. Did you, you want to be a veterinarian or something when you grow yes. up? Yes. Okay. Yes. A lot of fun there. Great, great. Well, talk to us a little bit about what some of the things were that you learned. Uh, I think the best thing I learned is how they think and the way they act. Yeah. Um, they actually, the more stupid a dog seems is actually the more memory they hold about who they love. Mama, what are you doing? Come on. That's very interesting. Yep. So they've stored, using all that brain space for memory, right? They use a lot of it for memory and um, they actually use a lot of their brain for basic uses mm -hmm. and without like one certain part of their brain, mm -hmm. the hippocampus, they can't recall anything. Wow. Wow. Well, I wish you very much luck in uh, you trying to become a veterinarian someday. Yeah. You stay good, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, sweetie. All right. Well, thank you again. Tell everybody your name again. Angel Friels. Okay, very good. Thank you. Hi, how you doing? What's your name? Lily. Lily? What's your project on? Photography. So you got the little Photoshop icon up there. You a big Photoshop fan? Not really. No? <laughs> photography fan? Yes. Okay. So uh, what got you into photography? What made you want to study this or do a project on it? My mom did photography for a little bit. Yeah? You kind of into it yourself now too? Yeah. Okay. So what, uh, what do you like taking photos of the most personally? People. People? Yeah. Okay. Not landscapes, not animals, but people. Yeah. People are full of expression, aren't they? Yes. So is this something you want to do as a career or is this something you're just dabbling around as a nice hobby? I mean, yeah, I want to do it as a career. Yeah. So we could pay you money to climb on top of Mount Everest and get us some good pictures? No. <laughs> no, that doesn't sound like fun. Okay, National Geographic won't be calling. But, uh, well, we wish you a lot of luck. Tell everybody your name again. Lily. Okay, thank you very much for your time today. Good job. Well, I'll tell you what, folks, if you would have told me, I don't know, 15 years ago that I'd be standing in Rochester, Indiana, talking to a young lady about Purdue University, whoo, I, I wouldn't have put my money on that bet. 
But uh, nevertheless, we're here at RMS, and uh, we've got a nice project put together by this young lady. What's your name? Taylor Howard. Taylor, are you a big Purdue fan? Yes. So you like to say boiler up? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like to go Hoosiers myself, but we'll leave it at that. Hey, talk to us about Purdue, though. A very good school, of course, with a lot of uh, important people coming out of it. Some, name some of the people that have graduated from Purdue. Um, Neil Armstrong. Yeah, he's a big one. Um, I'm not sure of any more. Hey, we got Neil Armstrong on the board. That's enough for us, right? Well, uh, talk to us about uh, the Boilers. Have you been down there to some of the games? You gone down to the campus at all ever? Yeah, I've been to, um, I think, a football game and two or three basketball nice. games. Nice. That's a lot of fun down there, right? Yeah. Well, neat. Well, a neat project here. Tell everybody your name again. Taylor Howard. Excellent. Well, good job, Taylor. Thanks. Okay, well, this is a fun one. This one's uh, about slime, right? Yes. All right, what's your name? Lily Ian. Lily, what gave you the motivation to make some slime? I kept sawing it on YouTube, and my friend's doing it, and it looks really fun. Nice. So you're sitting here playing with it. What's it made of? Is it a secret? Uh, no, it's made out of glue and laundry detergent. Glue and laundry detergent. So it smells good, too, right? Yes. Awesome. So uh, you've got different kinds here. This one doesn't look so fun. What is that one? It's called Flown Slime. It has styrofoam beads in it to make it pop a bunch. Oh, that's fun. Well, uh, very neat. Again, tell everybody your name. Lily Eaton. Good job, Lily. Having fun with the slime here at the RMS 20% presentations. Well, this is a guy after my own heart here. We've got a gamer doing the gaming history. And I have to tell you, I think I've owned at one point in my life every one of these gaming systems. What's your name? Kay Johnson. Very nice. And what gave you the inspiration? Are you a big gamer now? Do you like to play games? Yes, I play games a lot, and it's just kind of what I do as a hobby now. Strategy games, war games, you play in Tetris all the time. What kind of games do you like the most? Um, usually games that don't have endings, games that just are like have a free play mode. Nice, nice, where you can just explore the world, do your thing, right? Well, I see uh, one of the things has got to be a hit. You're showing people uh, Pong Sports. Tell us about that. Where'd you get that old thing? Um, my grandma actually had it in her attic, and I got that from her. It's really, it's really cool. It has tons of different modes on it. Very nice. Have you played? Does it still work? I tried hooking up to my TV, but no, it did not. Couldn't get it to work. Well, very neat. And uh, you've got some others. What are some of the other game systems you've got here? Um, I have the um, Atari 2600 and the original Nintendo. Uh, I also have a Game Boy Advanced uh, DS and a 3DS. And I have a PS4 controller right there. Nice PS4, that's the big one now. You have uh, some Xboxes at home probably too? Uh, yeah, I have an Xbox One. Excellent. Well, very neat display here. Uh, all started back in the 70s, right, with the first, con uh, first console? Yes. A lot, lot of fun. Well, tell everybody your name again. Kay Johnson. Excellent. Well done, Mr. Johnson. Thank you very much. Thank you. Dun, 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 dun. Is that the theme song? Yeah, there we go. What's your name? Braden Crom. Got to look there. Tell him again. Braden Crom. Excellent. Star Wars, you a big fan? Yeah. I saw the original one in the theater when it came out. That's how old I am. There's dirt that's not as old as I am. You get into Star Wars after they started doing the prequels again with Jar Jar Banks, and now you followed it all the way through, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Did you go back and watch the originals? Yeah. Of course. What's your favorite out of all of them? Revenge of the Sith. Revenge of the Sith. Nice. Very good. Talk to us about some of the stuff you got on the table here. Um, so these are the vehicles, and so these are their weapons. That's Chewbacca, and then this is Han Solo. Who's your favorite character out of all of them? Han Solo. Han Solo. Does he die in the new movie? Uh, yeah. I'm saddened. I'm saddened greatly. I haven't seen it yet. You've spoiled it for me. You weren't supposed to tell me. No, I'm just kidding you. Tell everybody your name again. Uh, Braden Crom. Well, you've done a great job on your project. You brought in the props. You got the whole thing here. Great job. Thanks for being here today. You're welcome. Okay, well, uh, I had to come over here. This young man's got uh, one of the things that was on my Christmas wish list that Santa didn't bring me this year. This is called the Sphero, right? Yep. All right, what's your name? I'm Lane. Lane? What's your last name? Shank. Excellent, Lane Shank. Talk to us about the Sphero. How long you had it? Was it a Christmas gift for you? Uh, yeah, it was a Christmas gift about two years ago, I think. Very cool. And uh, talk to people about what this thing does. Well, you can like take pretty much any mobile device yeah. and just control it with 
Yeah. Yeah. Like so it, it's a remote control ball, right? Well, uh, put it on the ground, spin it around for a second. You're controlling it with your tablet, right? Yeah. And uh, so it works for iOS or uh, Apple devices, right? Yep. All right. Well, he's got some ramps here, too. We'll let him play for a moment. We'll get some video of that. He's just making the ball go wherever he wants it to from his tablet. That would make my cats go bonkers. Now he's got a ramp. Let's see him ramp it over it. Oh, needed more momentum. Now he's got to back it up. Is there a trick to it? Uh, it's kind of hard to get it on the ramp. But. Yeah, ramp's not the easiest thing. Oh, just missed it. Bring her back around. We'll try one more time. Third time's the charm here. Think you're going to get it this time? Maybe. Hey, Yay. look at that. He ramped it. Very neat job. Again, let me put you on camera here, my friend. What's your name again? Lane Shank. Excellent. Did you have some fun with this one? Yeah, I had a lot of fun. Excellent. Well, neat presentation. Thanks for being here. Well, Scott Sager here. We've got a, another presentation. What's your name, sir? Enrique Navarro. Yes, uh, your father, <sighs> Hector. Yes. Very proud of you. He cries when he talks about you. He's so proud of you. I hope he does. <laughs> <laughs> He's very proud. He doesn't really cry about you, though. Talk to me. What, what, uh, what's your project on? I did my project on religion. A lot of it's about Christianity, but there's also a few stuff about others. Nice. So you just kind of learned about some of the religions of the world and uh, some of their histories? Yes. I, I kind of took this project as a way to learn about it a little bit. And I guess it was a good way because now I know a little bit more than I did. Yeah, sure. So uh, talk to us. you got, of course, religion. You've got the Christianity. Then you've got atheism, which is pretty much the disbelief, right? Yes. Okay. Well, how, long do, uh, how much time do you think you spent putting this together? Um, I got a little help from my, our mentor and my parents. Mm -hmm. Our mentor was a person that we got assigned so they could help us. Nice. I got my sister who's a really good thing in religion, sure. yes. So she was able to help you out? Yes. Excellent. Well, tell her about your name again. Enrique Navarro. Excellent. Very nice. Well, uh, right now I'm uh, behind a row of uh, red tractors and uh, that can only mean one thing. That's Case IH, right? Yeah, that's right. That's All right, right, what's your name, my friend? Um, Keegan Reinhold. Keegan, you a fan of Case? Yeah, yeah. I, grew, I basically grew up on the farm. It was all red. Yeah. And so. so no, no green in your world, no blue. No, no, no blue. <laughs> well, very good. Well, uh, talk to us about your project. What'd you learn from this project? Well, I learned that Case IH is owned in the U.S. since 1984. Um, they actually belong to a company called Exor, and the company is actually worth $2.4 million. Not billion? Not billion. Million? Yes, million. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. So, uh, you know how to drive these tractors, some of them? Yeah, I drove quad tracks. I drove uh, 5048s. I drove an M. Give me a farmer when you grow up or going to be an ag somewhere or you want something to do something else in life? Well, I'm go I'm, I'm, my plan is if I can get into Purdue, I'm going to go for agribusiness nice. and then I'm going to go back to the farm and be on the third generation of my grandpa's farm that was started in 1952. Okay, so keeping on the family tradition, huh? Well, very good. Well, thank you very much. Tell us your name again. Uh, my name is Keegan Reinhold. Okay, very nice job, Keegan. Well, uh, we're here with another young lady, a sixth grader, right? What's your name? Emma Wilson. Emma, you're talking about the Navy SEALs here. What uh, inspired you to talk about the SEALs? Um, my, most of my family has been in the Navy, not in the Navy, but the military. And I really wanted to be in the military, and I wanted to enlist in the Navy when I'm out, out of high school. Very nice. Uh, some great aspirations there to help serve your country. Do you want to be a SEAL? Yes, I do. Really? Reminds me of G.I. Jane. Have you seen the movie? No, I haven't. I'm going to. When you're older, maybe there's some adult parts to that movie, but uh, that's where uh, a woman goes into to boot camp for the Marines or for the uh, SEALs. Tough, tough gig, right? Mm hmm. The toughest of the tough, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, very good. Tell everybody your name again. Uh, Emma Wilson. And what'd you learn here, Emma, uh, through some of this? Uh, only 2% of every 100 get into the Navy, and it's just a really, really interesting topic to talk about, to be honest, yeah. So it's the best of the best getting into the SEAL program, right? Okay, well, uh, best of luck to you and your future careers. Appreciate you thinking about uh, serving your country. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, well, we've got another young lady here. What's your name, dear? Abby Maitland. 
and uh, talk to me about what your project was about. Uh, perspective of a base in cheerleading, like when you stunt, I'm the one that holds um, them up mostly on their sides. And so you're the bottom of the pyramid, so to speak. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we talked to somebody earlier, they were talking about being the spotter for cheerleading, and you're talking about being the base. That's uh, either the person tossing them up in the air or the person helping to support it all, right? Yeah. How long have you been a cheerleader? Well, you're a sixth grader, so you were on the sixth grade team this year? Yeah. Excellent. So uh, you want to keep cheerleading throughout your schooling? Yes. yes. I want to do it until like I'm graduated. You're done. Very good. Well, a lot of, not so much up north, but a lot of the schools down south, Georgia, South Carolina, Florida, etc., they'll actually give you full ride scholarships to attend the universities for cheerleading. So that's something you should be looking into. Yeah, I will be. Cheerleading until you're like 40 or something. Right? <laughs> yeah. It'd be a lot of fun. Well, thank you very much. Tell everybody your name again. Abby Maitland. Good job today. <laughs> Okay, well, we've got another young man here. What's your name, sir? Michael Dalton. Michael Dalton. Mr. Dalton, what's your subject? 9-11. Uh, okay, 9-11. How old are you? Uh, 12. So you weren't even born when 9-11 happened, were you? No. Okay. Did you learn a lot? Yeah. Talk to us about what you learned about that horrific day. Um, so, uh, um, Osama bin Laden, he uh, led al-Qaeda. And Al Qaeda, the 19 terrorists that um, hijacked the planes are from Al Qaeda, and they used box cutters, or they took flight, lens, flight lessons in America, and then they used box cutters on 9/11 to hijack the planes. So they smuggled them past security, and um, when the first plane hit, people thought that it was a freak accident. When the second plane hit, then they knew America was under attack. Yeah. And Go ahead. Some interesting facts, or one interesting fact is nearly 70% of like first responders that were there have lung problems. It was a terrible, terrible event. I saw uh, both planes hit on the news. Um, very scary time for America. Um, it's good to know that our youth is going back and looking to see what happened, learning about it, and then hopefully you're spreading the word and uh, letting people know what happened and some of your classmates, hopefully they're learning a little bit too, right? Yeah. Pretty horrific day? Yeah. Well, thank you again. Tell everybody your name again. Michael Dalton. Excellent, Michael. Good job today. Thank you. Well, Scott Sager here. Sorry. You're fine. I'll start over. Well, Scott Sager here. Uh, got a young lady here with us. She's wearing the uh, the colors. Talk to us. What's your name? Lily Watson. And uh, when I say the colors, I can only be talking about Notre Dame, of course, when you're in the area up here. Big Notre Dame fan, I take it? Yep. Yep. What's your project on? Uh, the Notre Dame and USC rivalry. There's a rivalry between USC and Notre Dame? Yeah. Just kidding. Everybody knows there's a rivalry. How long has this rivalry been going on? Um, well, it started in 1926. 1926. If you took almost all of your classmates' ages combined, you still wouldn't be back to 1926. That's how long ago that was. That's an old rivalry, right? Yes. Okay, what do you think the biggest rivalry is in? Is it the volleyball? Is it the football? Is it the basketball? Football. It's the football rivalry, right? Probably one of the biggest in the country, right? Right. All right. Well, uh, what are some of the things you learned through your project here? Um, the largest victory was 51-0 to zero, Notre Dame. Notre Dame took them 51 to nothing? Yep. And no one has defeated USC more than the Notre Dame. The Irish take great pride in that, don't they? Yep. <laughs> Now, you want to go to Notre Dame sometime? Yes. I see you've been there. Are some, these your ticket stubs or family members' ticket stubs? It's my mentors. Your mentors' ticket stubs. Well, a uh, very neat uh, collection there. And then I see you've got a nice project here. It's got Coach Rockney. It's got some of the big games through history. A lot of fun. So uh, talk to me about the series. Who leads the overall series between the two? Notre Dame. Okay. Well, you got, do you have, have the numbers? Um, well, Irish leads 42, 34, and 5. Okay, she's got it written down right here. That helped us both. 42, 34, and 5. Go Irish, right? right. Well, best of luck to you. Tell everybody your name one more time. Lily Watson. Excellent. Good job today. Thank Thanks. Okay, I'm here with another young lady. What's your name, dear? Haley Coleman. Parakeets, huh? Yeah. Do you have parakeets at home? No, I do not. But you want like a hundred of them, don't you? <laughs> not a hundred. That's too much. That's just too much. I had a friend who uh, had a parakeet that would literally fly over the trash to uh, go to the bathroom. So she never had to clean a cage. Oh, yeah, geez. 
So uh, talk to us, what made you decide to go with parakeets? Um, I just really, I've been interested in parakeets and I really want one. So I decided if I was gonna get one, I wanted to prove to my mom that I know all about them and know how to take care of them. Do you feel like you've proven yourself? I feel like I should have. If I haven't, then that's kind of sad because I did all this work. Yeah, exactly. But I like your technique. You want to do something, take some responsibility to do it. You take the time to learn about it. You use it in a project. I think you've got a very compelling argument. Is this mom behind the camera there? What do you think, mom? Are we getting a parakeet? Mom's still shaking her head. I don't know. What do you think? I think you should really get me one, mom. <laughs> Or we'll work on mom, but a neat project. What's probably the most fascinating fact about them that you found out? I found out how many colors that they can come in. Yeah, how many? Um, they can come in about six. Okay. I didn't they, know that. They, like green, blue, yellow, white, um, violet, black. All that. Very neat. Now, if you uh, were to get one, do you have a favorite color you would choose? I really wouldn't choose one because like whatever one. Whatever one you got, you'd be happy, right? Yeah, I don't want to be picky. We should start a Facebook campaign. Maybe if you get a million likes, mom will get you a parakeet or something. Did you hear that, mom? <laughs> Mom's still shaking her head. Well, thank you. Tell everybody your name one more time. My name is Haley Coleman. Excellent. Good job today. Okay, folks, here we go. Hi, right, baby. We got another puppy. We've got animals this year. I'm loving that. Well, uh, talk to me, dear. What's your name? Sophia Freeman. Sophia, what are we doing our project on? Pugs. Did you do this just so you could bring your dog to school? Uh, yeah. That's why I would have done it. What's your pug's name? Uh, his name's Wrigley. Wrigley, as in the Cubs? Yes. As in the Cubbies? Huh? We're You're Cubs so fans. Sweet. Yes, you are a sweetheart. So uh, you knew about pugs a little bit, but I bet you learned a few things about this. I, I did, actually. Um, there was a lot of facts I learned, especially my mom's personal favorite. Uh, a group of pugs is called a grumble. A grumble of pugs. I have thoroughly been educated here today, I can tell you that. Um, grumble. So, something else I learned that was really interesting was that they're also called Dutch Bulldogs. I really? Are you a Dutch Bulldog or are you a pug? Yeah, if you would have answered me, I would have freaked out. I'm just telling you. I like the scene, did you ever see Men in Black where the pug was yes. one of the aliens. That was a lot of fun. Well, a beautiful, did you draw this by the way? That's pretty darn good artwork too. You might have a career there. Talk to us now. Well, uh, very neat, Wrigley. Thanks for being here. How are the Cubs gonna do this year, Wrigley? Yeah, Wrigley doesn't know either. I think he says, I hope they win. I hope they win, that's what we want. Well, very good. Well, I've had a lot of fun here today. We're gonna make Sophia the last interview, but uh, thanks Wrigley for being on camera. Thanks to all the kids who were here. Great stuff, uh, Mrs. Atkinson doing great work over here at the middle school with these 20% presentations. I'm Scott Sager, you'll see us next time here on RTC4.